Oh yes, you're welcome back. It's still summit. And we've actually been extraying the activities of 2021 under President Muhammad Buhari's uh, administration. In this segment, we're also going to look at issues very, very germane, very fundamental to the existence uh, of Nigerians. And that's the issue of uh, security. People have actually asked us to play down the use of the word insecurity. Let's actually look at security. How can we better secure ourselves as a nation, as individuals? That's our focus on this edition of the program. Um, you recall that um, the war against the uh, insurgency had been on even prior to this administration. And President Momodi said he had the capacity to actually uh, put an end uh, to insurgency in the far north before, actually, before it spread to other parts of the nation. To today, six years and above of President Mohamed Buhari, insurgency has not been tackled Kidnapping has actually been added, and then the banditry has actually been added to so many forms of insecurity in the land. Today, on this edition of this program, that's this segment, I have an expert in the area of security, someone who has so much experience in um, what you may call uh, 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 insurgency. He's been in Afghanistan. Uh, somebody who served in the U.S. Army, a major in the U.S. Army. Do, no, no, let me belabor the issue. Let me bring him on. I'm talking about no other person than Major Nienka Ogunson, he retired, that's uh, in the U.S. Army. Uh, he's of Nigerian extraction. He hails from here. And uh, he's so much passionate about putting in his own idea to put an end to insurgency, particularly in Nigeria. Join me in welcoming my guest on this segment of the program. Uh, they join you in car of Monsoya retired. That's uh, U.S. Army. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. You actually served in the U.S. Army. Yes. And uh, you attained the rank of a major. Yes, sir. Uh, tell us your experience. When did you join and then uh, how far did you go? Well, I initially joined as an enlisted man. And um, I spent a total of 15 years. Um, five of those years was enlisted and 10 was as an officer. So basically, I was able to command uh, an infantry unit, commanded um, air and missile defense uh, unit. You remember the squad missiles in Iraq? We we're actually the ones that programmed those missiles to shoot them down. Um, also, I trained infantrymen to become world-class uh, guys and also do some special operations with uh, special forces in the uh, eastern province of uh, Zabu in uh, Afghanistan. In, in uh, Afghanistan. And uh, in Iraq too. And Iraq. So is, well, uh, when we talk about insurgency, mm -hmm. that means it's an area that you are very, very, very familiar with. Yes. Now, we've been tackling insurgency in the last uh, 12, 13 years, yet we have not really, we have not really been able to, to contain it. Mm -hmm. um, we've had trainings, our men have had trainings in the U.S., some of the U.S. Uh, 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 Army have also come over to offer training to us. Why is it that this agency has refused to die in Nigeria? First of all, uh, there's so many aspects to insurgency that's more than just the military combat operations. Um, there's political aspect, there's economic aspect, and the most important thing is the real intent to actually fight it. You can lay down plans, act like you want to fight something, but if you're not actually have the intent to go after it, it's not just it's totally different from conventional war, where, you know, just shooting What do you mean by intent? You mean the political will or the will uh, the, the, of, the, of the administration to fight? Government has not a means towards that is committed to waging and fighting war and bringing uh, insurgency to his knees. From our personal analysis, if we have the intent of curbing insurgency, you have to go by the principles of war. And the most important thing is cutting down the logistics and follow the money. The northeastern border is still porous. Everybody knows that. Anybody can go in and out in the northern area from Nigeria to the Shea at will. Even cattle areas comes true. Nobody should be able to cross our border. We should know every fly that move in and out of our area of operation. We don't right now. 
So we don't even know who's funding them. We don't even know how they're getting the money. We don't even know how to get it. We see them on, on videos. They have all these sophisticated weapons. Somebody somewhere is funding. Somebody somewhere is arming them. Why are we not going after those resources? Do we know them? I, I believe we know them. You know, in the 21st century, it's hard for you to move large amount of money without some kind of wire transfer or digital footprint. So when you fight insurgency, it's going to be all encompassing. Digital fight, physical fight, economic implications of, the, of the, if we don't do all three together, we're just scraping it on the head. If we keep fighting these guys and they're being armed and they have more weapons, more ammunition than our men and women on the ground, how can we win that? If we can't infiltrate their camps to know what they're doing. I, I just to believe the leaders they're parading are actually not their leaders, because that's one of the uh, traits of insurgency. They will prop up other people as leaders, and those are the people you go after. Whereas the main leaders are kept secret. I'll give you a good example. Everybody knew about uh, Osama bin Laden. They made it sound like he was somewhere in Afghanistan in the mountain. The U.S. government put a lot of resources in that uh, Shalako, Shalako Valley, trying to give Osama. But Osama was in Pakistan, living in a mansion with his newly married wives and kids. So there's always deceptive approach as well when you're fighting an insurgency. But you have to verify it. You have to develop that intelligence picture. It's not an easy job. And that's why I always said the intent is very important. There must be a complete intent of trying to do it. Somebody has to do the dirty job and paint the intelligence picture right. Right now, I don't think we have intelligence picture. Okay, you, you have just spoken about what we are not doing uh, rightly. Now, apart from the intent, uh, have you seen our approach the, uh, practically now in terms of uh, logistics, in terms of uh, strategy and all that? Our military is said to be one of the best in the world. Why is it that uh, we fall prey to these insurgents who are ragtag and uh, highly trained? Why, why is it that our men, in fact, our uh, uh, just uh, last year, LD was attacked mm -hmm. and we lost men. Yes. I mean, many a time you've heard that the ambush were laid for our men and they were killed. So why is it, why, what are we not getting right? Is it the training or intelligence or logistics or equipment? I, I will tell you, sir, that this, at this point in time, you know, I mentioned the elements of war. Another key important thing is surprise. The, the surprise is on the insurgent side right now because they have a better intelligence picture of the, the, the German military. How did you know? Because it is, anybody will know if you keep getting ambushed over and over without knowing that somebody knows where you're going. Unless somebody wants to claim they don't, they're not a professional soldier. If you're a professional soldier, same thing happened to us. Happened to you? Yes, because I had uh, an Afghan soldier that was within my unit that was passing information, but took me a while to know when we plan our mission, he's there. He sent his information to them. And we're taking routes that is not normal roads because we go cross country to get to our objectives. And but we're still running to this roadside bomb. So that tells me somebody is telling someone something. It's not my job as a commander to figure out who within my unit is passing out the information. So that's why I said the intent is very, very important. For us to turn this over, we have to infiltrate the camp. We have to paint the right picture. You say they have better intelligence than Nigerian uh, army? Maybe not infrastructure, but they have people who are willing to go to the, inside the Nigerian army. How does a ragtag outfit come into NDA? That, that's the question. It, it baffles my soul. But what about uh, when, when, when our men fall prey by way of ambush? By this, is there no way we can actually forestall such tragedies? I mean, our men, is it that we don't have the training to know that there could be danger along their path? I never went on, on, on patrol with them. And that's one of the things. If you're not doing your patrol principles right, then you're not going to be able to plan for ambush. Ambush are surprises. It can surprise anyone. But like we said, intelligence 
know your battle space. Before I move out with my unit, I have two elements with me. I have my forward observers, and I have my QRF, which is my quick, quick reaction and force. So if my forward observer lay down eyes and it tell me real time what's going on, then I move my main body. If I run into trouble because of deception, I have my quick reaction and force. That's going to support me within 10 minutes. They have to be there in 10 minutes to support the effort. Are we doing all this? When I read the report and I see that the, uh, the Boko Haram were killing more soldiers than the soldiers were killing them, those are the questions we'll be asking. There's an element but of. The soldiers have, I mean, the military has equally come out several times to say that they have actually neutralized, killed and, over 80 insurgents. And killed they, over, just this morning. Uh, this, the, 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 the Islamic leader, Sheikh Gumi, has come out and challenged the federal government to show evidence of the killings of the, uh, of the, of the bandits. I mean, what does that tell you about uh, what's happening? <laughs> Is the old saying that says... Uh, I mean, they, does that not portray the fact that they probably have greater intelligence than Nigeria? They, they've, 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 unless anybody wants to deny it, and they can prove it categorically, with things we see in the press, Somebody has infiltrated the ranks and given out information to this guy because they can pinpoint where the Nigerian troops are moving. That is the most dangerous thing. If they have the surprise element on their side, no matter how much weaponry you have, they are more prepared to be on the defensive. A defensive position is actually more dangerous than attacking position because you're moving. So, so, so what's your position, for instance? The Boko Haram, those who were frontline Boko Haram is are now surrendering and now laying, their, laying down their arms uh, in surrender. What uh, do you think the federal government should actually absorb and rehabilitate such people? Economic wise, yes, you can reabsorb them, but not into the military. It, that's a dangerous thing to do. How do we know it's not part of their plan to play a fool to the government, get in the military and understand? That, uh, We've seen these things happen over, over, and over in every area. In Iraq, in Afghanistan, they come in, they join their national army, they absorb them into it. Those are the people that actually killed the foreign forces. If you look at death in Afghanistan with American soldiers, we are more worried about an Afghan soldier shooting us, those that we're training, because we know some of them are Taliban sympathizers. Some of them are from the Jovico area. We have people in the army that's from the northeastern that could be connected to those guys, maybe family-wise, and they're sympathizers in the military. Are we, look, are we looking at all this before we assign people? Are we making sure our men have the right training? You know, I, I understand they don't want nobody wants to say we are not trained. And I've always said this, the Nigerian soldiers, actually, the, I'm talking about the men on the, on the ground. They actually one of the briefest in the world. That's my personal assessment. Okay. Because some of the equipment I've seen them utilize and tactics, none of my soldiers will step out. They will question why. The training that we have received in the US over time, uh, uh, you say it has not actually uh, impacted in, in the operations of the, of the military here in Nigeria. Until I know our men have, from time to time, periodically benefited from is a foreign training. Okay. So, so the way the Nigerian army is set up, or I don't even say Nigerian army, the Commonwealth army is set up sometimes negates the purpose of getting the training down. Even the British somehow die like that. The officers eat separate, the enlisted eat separate. We don't do that. We eat with our troops. In the US army? Oh yeah, we eat with our troops. I'm the last man to eat. All my soldiers eat first, make sure they're full. So when you want to do this training, why are we sending senior officers to training for combat operations? Well, you, if you want the training to get down to the men on the ground, it has to be your operational sergeants and your, and your warrants. Mm -hmm. The people that are actually going to walk the terrain. The people that are actually going to do the command and control on the ground. Not somebody that's going to be in Abuja calling somebody over the phone to do X, Y, and Z. You know, and that's one of the things I said. Discipline is another issue. You know, you don't see any meaningful military use of telephone in communicating. Telephone, anybody can hack your telephone. Anybody, if you know what you're doing, I can listen to your telephone call. It has to be secure radio communication 
at all times. Even if you have the Navy or the Air Force embedded, they have to go with what is on the ground. Because information is key. That is how you can win this war. If the, if the enemy knows what you're about to do, you've already been defeated before you started. So much, so much in terms of budgetary allocations have actually been allocated to, to, to insurg the fight insurgency. Do you think we have actually justified in this country? Recently, we succeeded in importing Tucano. Uh, Tucano was what we waited for for almost a year. Are we close to winning the war with, the, with this new equipment? <laughs> Those are fast-moving jets. It's good to have, but like I said again, is trying to fight conventional war instead of insurgency war. For you to fight insurgency, it has to be small, light, agile, and very quick. Very, very quick. Lightning speed. The same concept that was used by the Germans during the beginning of the World War I, Blitzreich. You have to move with overwhelming force, with a very light package. That's how you're going to get things done. Okay. Um, the 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 questions that have been asked about uh, the the insurgents, for instance, uh, whom uh, federal government had considered over time whether they should be granted amnesty or otherwise. Uh, do you think federal government should go ahead and grant those who are actually killed and be responsible for killing and maiming of Nigerians? I mean, amnesty. Uh, personally, I think they should be tried. I think they should have some, um, this is some way of bringing them in, but at the same time, they should be, they should be tried for their war crimes, you know? And if they're not found guilty, then they can rehabilitate them. But I strongly say you cannot absolve them into the military. You cannot. Okay. They've tested combat from the other side. Now, let, let, let me ask you, if, as, as a Nigerian, I believe you are patriotic enough, and that's why you are offering us this advice. Uh, in what ways can you actually avail Nigeria of your expertise in the area of a fighting business or this? Well, we can help with... Uh, Painting intelligence picture. Also, training the trainers how to actually walk this terrain, and also with the equipment that's actually needed. If you look at the right now, most of the insurgents are moving on motorcycles. We are moving with heavy wheeled vehicles. There's no way you're going to catch up with these guys because they know the terrain better than than uh, our soldiers. They live in Samisa Forest. For how long now? 15, 20 years? So they know the area very well. We come with heavy wheel vehicles and we try to catch up with motorcycles. It's not going to work. There are combat motorcycles out there. There are UAVs out there that will do patrol. We should have UAVs patrolling that airspace 24 7, knowing every move they make. And that will give the guys on the ground. Are you aware these soldiers have territories now? They have in Niger State, they have in uh, Brodno. They have in Yobe State, they have in Adama, they have in Zamfara. How can we recover these territories? We have to go after the headquarters. To kill the soldiers, you have to go after the head. The head? You have to go after the head. It, it, when Al Zarqawi was killed in Iraq, you will see the soldiers is kind of died down. Because he was, he, the soldiers is always a one man command. They may have different levels of leadership, but they always take command from one central figure. You take out that, that one man central figure, and everybody else who are not all into that insurgency will leave. Because most of them are not Boko Haram per se. Some people are getting paid to kill. They don't have a job. That's why I talk about economic implications. They don't have a job. The government is not doing anything for them to have any economic life. Somebody's offering to pay them X amount of money monthly if you do this. So they'll go ahead and do it and make money for their family. So if you were to, for instance, if President Mohamed Buhari should put a call across to you today and you are one-on-one -one with uh, President Mohamed, what would you tell him about this insurgency? Uh, if he wants me to help, the first thing I ask is freedom to operate. Because you cannot give a commander, uh, uh, commander's intent to go do this kind of operation. I have all kinds of strings. 
if somebody else is pulling strings, then you can't get the job done. First thing we have to do is to have develop a highly, highly clear intelligence picture. You cannot win any form of battle without it. even the US. We run into some bad intelligence in Iraq. And we pay for it daily. When your intelligence is not clear, when I tell you if you go 20 kilometers, you're going to see X village, and you get that it's not there. It could be an ambush site. So if your intelligence picture has to be on point, close to 95% accurate. But if you're, if you're just going blindly, we're just playing Russian roulette. Go down there. Are you optimistic we can win this war? We can win this war, sir. Like, if we have intent, the training, and put a purpose, and remove the political pressure on the commanders. We can't really thank you enough. Uh, we know Nigeria is blessed. Blessed in terms of uh, human and uh, material resources. You are certainly one of our, uh, let me say, uh, pride Thank you, in sir. terms of uh, you've gone there, you've acquired the training, you've acquired the experience, and here you are ready to avail your expertise to Nigeria so that Nigeria can be a peaceful nation. We're talking of economic wars. This can be tackled if our security is right. That's if everybody can move out safely. We can, we can only wish you the very best. Uh, thinking that after you must have uh, uh, done uh, whatever, you will come back to this country. That. I'm sure you have your family <laughs> relations in Nigeria and you want to come back and walk freely on the street. Yeah, this is this is home for me. There's no other home. If I, I'm from a Jebu. After adventure, coming back. And home. every soldier that I've commanded knows about the Jebu. Because I always tell them, even when in battle, I'm going home to Jebu. Something. Thank you very much, uh, Major Onyika Obunsonya. That's a, 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 a major in the U.S. Army, retired, and he's back home now ready to offer uh, security tips and advice and support consultancy to this country so that Nigeria can be a safe country and rank among the safest countries in the world. Thank you very much for your time. That's our package today on this edition of a Summit and uh, we hope to see you again next week. Thank you very much for your time and your support and for watching this program. Go out there and win in 2022.